It's just honestly been horrific. There's no other, there's no words to describe how it's been. We just never really thought we'd be in this position again. Um, and especially, you know, through that since March and we you know going into lockdown and we'd moan like, oh, you know, this is horrible, COVID. I don't want to be stuck in the house. And and then to in October having that news that a tumour had grown back. I would honestly be isolated in my house for the rest of my life if it meant that Freya could be well. It's just it just really just gives you, you know, how cruel life can be. It's it's awful. Um, and I think this time around, because of COVID, it's been so hard attending hospital appointments and, and, and things like that, because there can only be kind of one parent in the room. And when she had her surgery in December, you know, no one could go and see her. Um, my mother and stepfather literally would have to take it in turns to sit in the room with Freya because they weren't allowed to be in the same room together. And that's so I think that's just it's so, so hard it, on top of how awful the situation is to have that as well. It's not nice. Um, so, yeah, it's just it's just been awful. It's just been heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. But just got the support around us now has been amazing. So I think that's really helping us kind of get through it, I suppose. A few weeks ago, your family flew out to America in the hope of having more proton beam therapy and alternative treatments as well, which they're having to fund themselves. It's very expensive. That's the biggest problem right now, isn't it? It's the financing yes. of this. Yes, exactly. And the issue is, like like I said, we don't know. We, there's no plan in place of of, of what's going to happen after Freya's finished her um, radiation treatments. We don't know how much it's going to cost. So if she does have, um, if she is eligible for a clinical trial, I mean, that could cost about half a million pounds or it could cost less. It could cost more. We just don't know. So at the moment, it is just trying to raise as much money as possible. So whatever happens after the program, we, we, we would hope that we'd have the money there to just chuck it at whatever Freya needs straight away so she can have it immediately. Olivia, you, you are his, uh, Freya's sister, but you said you, to me earlier that you feel more like her mum because yeah. you're so protective of her. And there's, there is that age gap as well between yeah. you. How difficult has it been for you? I mean, your family are in America. You're here just waiting for word every day. Yeah, exactly. And it is just living day by day. Um, it's The situation just changes. Every time I speak to my mother, I've, it, something has changed. It, it's just... It's agonising. It honestly is agonising. I mean, the time difference as well. I don't get to speak to my mother until about five, six o'clock in the evening. And, you know, that's my day gone and they're just waking up. So it's just so that's, I'm having communication with with them once a day. Um, so it's been it, that that I find is really, really hard. Um, but yeah, the, it's just the pain I feel missing them all. It's awful. But then at the same time, I do want to be here. Um, especially in terms of the fundraising now, because of the time difference, it's easier for me to be here to kind of coordinate it all. I'm on the same time as everyone else in the UK. I think if I was in America as well, it would just cause ructions. It would be it'd be so hard to do that. Um, so, it's yeah, it's awful. And the thing is as well, even if I did want to go out and visit them, I wouldn't be able to because of COVID. Like I, I, it's so strict. They had the amount of paperwork and things that you had to go through to get out there and get approved by the embassy and there was a time where we thought oh my god they're not going to be able to go um so you know for me to get out there would just be impossible really so many people are fundraising i know there's a fitness festival going on until the end of the month and you need to raise over two hundred thousand pounds you yeah. haven't set a, you haven't set a target because no. you really don't know where this is going no exactly we, we don't and and i mean each MRI scan in itself costs about £10,000 and she's already had two so and she'll be having another one um, and, and on top of that we've got the proton and then the potential clinical trial which um, Freya's doctor is looking into every day like speaking to different do um, doctors all over America really so yeah 200000 we put in kind of as the as the target but we just do, we, we just don't know it may well exceed that amount um, but you know definitely the amount of fundraising that's going on fingers crossed we can kind of exceed that target. Any family going through this is difficult enough. What's it like when you've got that financial barrier knowing that Freya's 
health outcome relies on yeah. strangers kindness yes i know i agree and especially in COVID times it's so so difficult to think of ways to fundraise i remember last time we were fundraising we would we held a couple of uh fundraising dues and things and people would buy tickets to come to that and then that 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 in itself would kind of you know having conversations with people you kind of think of other ways you can fundraise but during these times now, you can't have any of that. You can't kind of meet up with people and to, to have conversations. Obviously, it's all going to be virtual or socially distanced. It's really, really difficult. And I think the main thing we've been doing at the moment is raffles. Um, but you got you do have to think to yourself, how many raffles can be held kind of thing? There's got to be other things that that we can do to fundraise different kind of different kind of ways. But it's just really, really difficult to think of ideas. For you as a sister, people often forget about the other child in the family that's having to deal with this and cope with this and get and get on with their lives as well, because you're watching this unfold, mum and dad taking over on all the caring aspect. What's it been like for you? I mean, it has been hard. It has been really hard. Um, but the support around me, I mean, I've been actually surprised and it's, it's warmed my heart how many people have kind of said to me, oh, oh how are you? because I don't really think about myself in this situation. I, all I'm thinking about is Freya and my family. So when people ask me, oh, how are you? I kind of have to take a step back and think, oh, well, do you know what, actually I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. Um, but, you know, having, uh, living with my boyfriend, obviously he's extremely supportive. I've got also got my auntie, who's Freya's auntie as well. So we've kind of been su supporting each other um, and I've got, got my a separate dad to Freya so he's been amazing as well supporting me um but like I said to you earlier I think the first time we the, the first time Freya was diagnosed and I was still in school I think that was a lot more difficult um to, to deal with because I knew I had to get through school I knew I had to do it and just kind of switch off um but now I feel like I've got more of an opportunity to focus on Freya focus on my family and focus on the fundraising and it does help you before we started fundraising and they went out there I felt helpless I and it's the worst I've ever felt but now started the fundraising I do feel like I'm helping in some way and I'm supporting them even though I'm not with them so what are you doing are you, are you involved in any activities yourself are you taking part in any events um at the moment no but we did run a raffle um i think it was about a week ago which was huge i mean that that raffle took over my life honestly it was for a 500 pound selfridges voucher which my friends um my auntie and my grandmother we all came together and bought it so i was so grateful for for those um so yeah we bought the bought that voucher and raffled it and it was huge we sell, we sold over a thousand tickets and i think we raised over five thousand pounds so i think when we drew that raffle i was exhausted the day after i felt so deflated i thought oh my gosh that that, that has actually taken over my life and i didn't realize so um the last week or two i've just kind of been um running freya's instagram page and um, sharing all different raffles that people are doing there um, and I know um, a couple of groups have been doing like um, walking for Freya um, and, and fitness challenges like Emma's. Um, so I've just kind of been in the backgrounds kind of sharing it there. Um, I know Freya's school are doing a, um, they've been doing like a challenge walking and running for Freya. Their final walk is tomorrow. So I'll be going there just to be at the finish line and, and clapping them on. Um, but hopefully now next week, I'm going to start thinking of ideas for for me to do now that I've got a bit more time of my hands. So, um, yeah, I'll be trying to trying to break my, you know, think about things to do for that. Give us an idea of how much this is costing a week for your family to be in America. So just we, we know how much you're trying to raise every week to bring in. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I don't actually know how much each proton session costs, but she is having them every day, Monday to Friday. So, um, you know, in, it, in itself, that's that's a lot. And, you know, on top of all the treatment that she's having, it's also accommodation as well. You know, they've got to live out there. And, and I think at the moment they live in they live in kind of like an apartment. Um, and so, yeah, it's the living expenses as well. You know, they're living out there whilst also paying for a mortgage and their bills at home. So, you know, it's it's costing a lot. But to be honest with you, I don't have 
an ex exact figures really. That's fine, Olivia. It's really great to speak with you and catch up with you with regards to what's happening. Keep in touch with us. And if there's anything anybody can do to fundraise and help Freya Bevan, Olivia is at home. She's ready to take your call. Just DM her if you can through Facebook, through the Instagram page and the Twitter pages as well. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much, Emma.